guys, this is Arcade15 bringing you a review of the HTC Droid Incredible 2. Uh, this is a relatively new phone for Verizon, came out about 2-3 months ago. Um, let's start off with the hardware specs. Uh, it's nothing too impressive. You've got a 1 GHz Scorpion processor from Qualcomm, I believe, um, which is actually misleading given it's a 1 GHz processor, but we'll get more into that later. Uh, it's got 756 megabytes of RAM, which is actually more than a lot of Verizon's 4G phones, and features a 8 megapixel camera on the back along with a dual LED flash and a forward-facing 1.3 megapixel camera on the front. Uh, from a build quality, the Incredible is very, very solid. I can only describe it to be like a rubbery, matte kind of finish on the back along with a similar finish on the front and then the pane of glass for the screen. Um, it feels very solid in the hand, no rattling or anything like that. I know some people report a loose battery connector here that rattles a bit, but just return it if that happens to you because it shouldn't. Um, battery button is nice and big and easy to hit for this kind of phone, which is nice. Some of them are kind of tiny and annoying to find, but this one's very easy to find. Um, overall heft, it's actually on par with my iPhone 4 and it's about the same dimensions which is pretty impressive because this is a 4 inch screen unlike the iPhone's 3.7 inch screen. That brings me to the actual screen quality. It's very solid, color reproduction is very very good. Uh, you can still see pixels to an extent if you zoom in really really close but it, you won't really do that that often. Um, it's not as good as the iPhone's retina display but uh, contrast and color reproduction is very accurate and uh, certainly looks a lot better than Motorola's pentile displays that you'll find on the X, X2, Atrix, etc. which are just awful. Uh, one thing that I'd like to talk about is the battery cover. <laughs> to take off the battery cover you actually have to pry this off back here and it really feels like you're gonna snap the phone in half when you do it. You really gotta... You see that? That's how the battery cover works. Um, I mean, there's nothing entirely wrong with that, but <laughs> it just makes you really uncomfortable because you feel like you just snapped your phone in half. Um, also, one thing of note is the battery cover actually acts as the antenna in this phone, so you, uh, you need to have the battery cover on to get any reception. If you're a mod or anything like that that keeps the cover off, just be aware that it is the majority of the phone's antenna. Um, cell reception is great. It's actually better than on my iPhone in areas where I get full bars of 3G. I get 2.2 megs down via speed test where on the iPhone I get around 8 or 900 kilobytes down, which is says a lot for the antenna design of this phone compared to the iPhone. Um, photo, cam or photo quality is phenomenal. Another important feature to note about the camera is that the shutter speed is really quick takes a picture and then immediately you can go back and take another. The camera delay on the iPhone and a lot of other smartphones lately is really annoying and you'll end up missing a lot of shots that you wish you could have taken if it had reacted a bit faster. Anyways, so the camera quality is solid, front facing camera is as expected and on every smartphone not great. Um, Skype calls are a little bit um, uh, a little bit populated by particles, uh, not very crisp, but it, that's to be expected, but at least the back-facing camera is a pretty solid shooter. Moving on to the CPU speed, this thing really seems to help perform a lot of dual-core phones on the market. Browsing is really quick, um, web pages load really fast, even on 3G, especially compared to an iPhone, and uh, it's just generally a joy to use. Um, a lot of dual-core phones, if you look at their scores on Quadrant, for example, the Droid 3, score about 2,000 points on the Quadrant benchmark. This phone scores upwards of 1,600, which means that tiny difference is just artificial benchmarking numbers. In day-to-day -day usage, in fact, I found that this phone outperforms phones such as the Droid 3 or the Atrix, simply because the hardware is better taken advantage of by Android. It just works a lot better. So on a day-to-day -day, uh, usage, web browsing, doing which, whatever you do on the phone, it's just a lot smoother than on a lot of dual-core phones for whatever reason. Um, audio quality is awesome. You can uh, 
have several EQ settings, but more impressively, there's an SRS enhancement mode that really boosts the bass and gives it a kind of um, Dre Beats sound straight out of your phone. Very bass heavy, but still sounding great and not muddy, um, which is really, really nice. Uh, it comes with about 8 gigs of onboard storage and a 16 gig card, and then that's expandable up to 32 gigs. The last and most important point about the HTC Incredible is the literally incredible battery life. I was getting around 38 hours unplugged with actual usage, which is really unheard of for any smartphone today. Uh, I have had it unplugged for about 24 hours here, which is slightly misleading, 25 hours, because I had it plugged in for about a minute to transfer some data, so probably closer to 30 hours. And as you can see, I'm sitting at 45%. My brightness is also around 50%, and it's been that way for the entire time. So it really is incredible. I haven't seen a smartphone uh, get phenomenal battery life like this. And even though I'm primarily an iPhone user, uh, just because I'm a dev and I develop apps, um, I'm really going to miss having this battery life. It's really, really phenomenal, and I really wish more smartphone manufacturers would build phones that are either this power efficient or have this big battery, this big of a battery. Uh, whatever they did to make it this power efficient and last the song really is incredible. Overall, this is probably the best Android phone on uh, Verizon's lineup. I've had the charge and that was awful, really, really slow performance, terrible battery life. I've had the Xperia Play, which is built like a kid's toy. I've had, name if you name it, I've probably had it. I've had the original Droid, I've had the Droid 2, Droid 3, uh, all of them all of them with tons of drawbacks, but the Incredible is just a solid device with just slightly dated hardware. But if you're not a spec freak and you're not just there to show off your friends, to your friends what specs your phone has and you really want something that's going to get you through the day and uh, be stable and not restart randomly, uh, this is the phone to do it. It's been a great uh, experience using it and uh, I highly recommend it from uh, Verizon's choice of Android phones. Have a good one.